Okay, folks, it's time for our fourth video in our 6.5 Creedmoor Hang Fire Investigation series that we've got going on here. We've learned a lot in the first three videos, and I'm hoping this video is going to wrap things up. This goes way back to a video I did, just a bullet test video I did on the 140 grain Barnes Match Burner bullet. And in that video, we were using Vitavori N550. It was the first time I had ever shot Vitavori N550. And we had started charge with charge weights that were pretty low, right? Starting low, working our way up. It's the golden rule. And we were using the CCI 450 primer. What we found in that video is that we were getting hang fires with this powder. So that's what kicked off this series. We did a lot of tests with different primers, both large primers and small primers. That was really the topic of the first two videos in this series. What we found were that on the small rifle primer side of things, the CCI 41 and the Remington 7.5 gave us the best performance. We were never able to get any hang fires with these two primers. We also tested a couple large primers, and we didn't have any problems with those either. But we did have, what, six or seven small rifle primers that we were able to get to hang fire or misfire completely. So that was kind of topic number one, primers. We found a huge difference in primer performance. As we've gone along, we've also talked a lot about temperature. I've been lucky that the you know, temperatures outside have been very cold over the last few days as we've tested this stuff. So we've been able to test low temperature performance. We have definitely seen some impact related to temperature. The colder it gets, the more likely we are to have hang fires or misfires. But to be honest, it does seem to be the least important variable. Choosing the right primer seems to be more important than the actual temperature. Now the last video, we looked at a bunch of different powders because the third variable here is case fill, the amount of the case that's full of powder. Now in 550, our test loads in the first couple of videos, we weren't filling up very much of the case. We had a lot of empty space in our case. So I wanted to test a whole bunch of other powders to see how they performed at minimum charge weights. The smallest amount of powder that we could find that was recommended in the manuals. Minimum charges. And what we used for that test was the very worst performing primer that we've seen so far. That is the S&B small rifle primer. In this application here with 6.5 Creedmoor, this is a very poor choice we're finding. So we loaded up rounds with this primer and minimum charges of a bunch of powders and they all failed which was a huge surprise. I expected at least some of these powders to be very easy to light because that, that's the other thing that uh, I should mention is when we get misfires, the primers go off. They absolutely go off. And in some of the earlier videos, we've torn rounds apart. We've looked at the primer. It's blackened. It clearly went off. Some of the powder in the case gets discolored. So clearly the primer went off. The flame went out the flash hole. It hit the powder enough to discolor it but just not enough to get it to, to light off. So it seems that this third, this third variable we're talking about of case fill seems to be extremely important as well. And that's what I wanna test in today's video. The last video we shot all these powders with minimum case fill, you know, minimum charges. Today, I wanna to go on the other end of the spectrum and shoot them all with maximum charges. Hopefully we don't blow our face off but we don't really have time to slowly work our way up with these guys. So we're just gonna, we're gonna jump to a very hot charge and see what happens. So that's, that's test number one for today. I wanna load up our crappy primer, the S and B, but I want to use max charges. I've got them laid out here from fastest burning over here with Reloader 15, all the way over to slowest burning with Hodgson Superformance. So if we look at the charge weights we're gonna to shoot today, you'll see that the charge weights kind of follow the burn speed, more or less. There's a couple, you know, that don't exactly follow exactly. Like our lowest charge is Varget. That's, our, that's one of our fastest burning powders we're gonna be testing. Our largest charge weight is over here with uh, Hodgson Superformance. That's the slowest powder we're gonna be testing today. Now, so, some powders are more bulky than others, but as a general, you know, a general rule, our case fill is going to be increasing as we go as well. Like this, you know, most of the powders on this end of the, the spectrum here are going to be completely full cases, maybe compressed a little bit. But our first few, Reloader 15, Varget, maybe H380, 
we'll have a little bit of uh, a little bit of empty case. Now I expect all of these to work. I expect us to actually shoot rounds today that don't hang fire. I think case fill percentage is going to be every bit as important as we found primers to be. Like I said, primers were a huge deal. I think we're going to find that case fill is a huge deal. And then there's also that temperature variable that has an effect, but it's not as important as the other two. Now I've got a weird number of cases here. So as far as brass goes, we're going to continue to use the small primer Starline brass that we've been shooting almost exclusively here with our 6.5 Creedmoor tests. Now we are, we are finishing up our fifth firing on this brass, I believe. It might be the fourth. I'll have to double check my notes, but I ended up with 49 cases left to complete this firing of our, you know, we've been working out of a batch of 100, 100 pieces of brass. So here's what I want to do. I want to take 40 of them and use those in our, in our hot load tests that I was just talking about, that we just looked at those charge weights for. So I want to shoot four shot groups. I want to take the nine pieces of brass that I have remaining after that, and I want to do a quick test with the Remington 7.5. This was one of our good primers, right? These worked really well. And I've got uh, several thousand of these on hand. I'm thinking this might be the primer that we choose to use going forward with 6.5 Creedmoor. So what I want to do is take those last nine pieces of brass. I want to load them up with Remington 7.5 primers. And I want to shoot the, the light loads from the last video with this primer. It'll just be one shot per powder. But it's just a quick spot test to see... I expect them to all work, right? Our previous experience with the Remington 7.5 was excellent. So I think even with the light loads, even with all of the excess case capacity, the Remington 7.5 will be hot enough to overcome that handicap. So it's kind of the two ends of the spectrum. I want to test those shots where a good primer makes up for crappy case fill. And our main test today, the 40 shots, I want to take a crappy primer and make up for it with excellent case fill, right? Bad primer, bad, uh, bad primer, good case fill, good primer, bad case fill, and let's just see what happens. Now, another thing I want to do, so far, our, our test bullet is the 140 grain Hornady Match Boat Tail Hollow Point. We've been shooting it at 2.875 inches, which was a little bit long, and we did that to increase that amount of empty case. We were, I think that's what's been so hard for a small group of you guys to understand about this series is we're not looking for a fix. We're not looking to fix problems. We're looking to create problems. We're trying to load bad ammo <laughs> and increasing that overall length out to 2.875 was a way to add a little of additional extra case capacity to the situation. Today, I want to go ahead and shorten it. We're, we're shooting our hot charges. So we're trying to fill up this case as much as possible. And I want to bring the overall length of our cartridges down to 2.800, which is, you know, what it shows in the Hornady manual. That's the, that's the normal SAMI maximum overall length for 6.5 Creedmoor. So we'll have almost a hundred thousandths of jump to the lands at that overall length. And it'll be, it'll be interesting to watch uh, accuracy today. Our last couple of videos where we've been shooting this bullet at 2.875, the groups, you know, when we actually get the freaking rounds to go off, the groups have been outstanding. So It'll be interesting to see if that continues today once we shorten it up to 2.8 inches. So I think that covers it. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. This is a confusing little series, right? It, it just is. But like I said, I think I've lost a few people, but I still, I think there's a couple thousand of you who are following along with me and seeing the value in this testing. So those of you who don't understand what's going on, just hopefully this will be the last one and then we'll be back to standard bullet testing that maybe makes a little bit more sense to you. So that's it. I'm gonna start getting primers put in. This brass is fully prepped, sized. I have deburred all of the flash holes, chamfered the case mouth. These guys are ready for primer, powder, and bullet. So let's get to that. So the first nine shots that I'm shooting with the Remington 7.5 primers, I'm gonna to continue to shoot those at 2.875 inches of overall length. They're gonna be identical to the last video except for the primer. I don't think I mentioned that. And I'll tell you what, the reloading here is gonna be pretty lame. It's gonna be very confusing dealing with all of these different powders. So I'm just gonna skip it all. Yep, I think I'm just gonna skip it all so I can focus on the reloading and not do something stupid. 
So I'll just see you guys out on the range. All right, folks, we got t-shirt weather almost today. It's uh, temperature up in the 40s. So good bit warmer than it has been in our last couple videos. I wanna start off by shooting the, the nine shots with the Remington seven and a half primer. One thing I might not have done a very good job of explaining back at the bench is, so you know, these nine powders, this does not include Reloader 26, which didn't give us any problems in the last video. And it doesn't include Vitavori N550 because we've already shot it so much. And you know, it, it shot well with this primer in a whole video of its own. So no need to duplicate that. So this is basically the nine powders we haven't shot yet with the Remington 7.5 at minimum charges. So we are shooting at 100 yards. This is my Thompson Center Compass. I mean, come on, we're on video number four of this. If you don't know what gun I'm shooting yet, you're probably never going to know. So let's just get started. We're going to shoot them in order of burn rate. I'll try to come up with something on the screen, I don't know, to keep track of uh, what we're, you know, what we've shot. But I'm going to shoot them all nine at the same dot. Now my prediction on these is that everything's going to work just fine and we won't have any problems. So let's find out. Just a touch of a hang fire there. Let's see, which one was that? That was our fourth shot, which is Winchester 760. That surprises me. Because it had done a halfway decent job in the last video with the S&B primers. So that's, that's very surprising. I'll have to double check that on video, make sure I wasn't imagining things. But first three shots, no hint of a hang fire, and pretty sure I felt one that time. So, all right, moving right along. All right, that's awesome. So the same charge weight, the same overall length that gave us so much problem in the last video. All we do is swap in a Remington seven and a half primer and they run just fine, except for that one maybe. I can live with that. I can definitely live with that. It is dead calm today, not a breath of wind. So I'm gonna give this guy a little bit of time with the chamber chiller to cool down and then we'll move on to our hot charges. Okay, now we switch from good primers with light charges to crappy primer with hot charges. So first up with our S&B primer is Reloader 15, 37.9 grains. Hopefully we don't blow our face off. All right, no terrible pressure sign on that one. And I don't know how to explain it. I, there certainly wasn't a distinct hang fire, but I thought I felt something like the tiniest little bit of a hang. I don't know. I might be imagining it. Let's uh let's just keep shooting. All right, the next 3 shots all felt 100% perfect. So I'm going to give Reloader 15 the benefit of the doubt and say that that first shot was probably me just imagining things. I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll hear it once I'm editing the video. So next up is Varget and 36.4 grains. All right, that guy definitely had a little bit of a hang fire. The first shot was fine, but that second one hung just a touch. Same thing there, a little bit of a hang. And another hang fire. Okay, next up is H380, 38.5 grains. Misfire, that's pretty disappointing. Another misfire. 
Okay, so all four were misfires. I looked at the notes from the last video, and in that video we had four misfires and one hang fire. So it seems like H380 might be a tough one to tough one to light. All right, next is Winchester 760. It did better than H380 in the last video, so hopefully that'll continue here. The charge weight is 41.3 grains. Pretty distinct hang fire. All right, Winchester 760 was four out of four with hang fires. That sucks. Now I suspect that's gonna be the last of the problems we see. All right, next up is IMR 4350. The charge weight is 42.0 grains. Okay, no problems whatsoever with IMR 4350. Those all felt perfect. Okay, next is H4350. We're shooting 41.5 grains. Okay, H4350 was perfect. So we're moving on. Next up is Reloader 17. Okay, Reloader 17 was perfect. Now this next one is going to be interesting. This is Vitivory N550. And our charge weight is 40 grains. I've had a couple of these shots so far that I think I felt just the slightest little bit of a hang fire. That last one was the worst. It is extremely slight though. So next is Vitivori N160, charge weight is 42.1 grains. Okay, N160 was perfect. So last up is Hodgson Superformance, this is 44.7 grains. That shot did seem to have just the slightest little bit of hesitation. Same with that one. Yep, same deal with that one. Those had just a little bit of hesitation. So very interesting stuff. Let's get back to the bench, see what we can make of it all. All right, first of all, can we take a minute to talk about our accuracy here. This was awesome. Even our first group of nine shots with nine random powders still shot into an inch and a half. And then all of our four shot groups, our best was Reloader 17 at 0.44 inches. And then uh, Winchester 760 was 0.46 inches and Varget was 0.47. The worst was H4350 at 0.79 and IMR 4350 at 0.78 absolutely outstanding accuracy with this Hornady bullet. We've seen it from the very moment we started shooting it. It's just awesome. And it looks to be the perfect match for our Thompson Center Compass. I couldn't be more excited about uh, getting to some hardcore bullet testing with that bullet. Should be a lot of fun. So let's talk over our two tests. So our first test with our single shots with the nine different powders, the only one that gave us any problem was Winchester 760 and even it wasn't terrible. Just the tiniest little bit of a hang fire. Now that's the first hang fire we've ever seen with the Remington 7.5 primer. So I'm really glad we did that test. 
It's just one more bit of evidence to confirm what we thought we already knew, and that's that the primer makes such a huge difference. So all of those charges that fell on their face in the last video with the S&B primer were just fine with Remington 7.5. Excellent stuff. So now onto our main test. We try and get them all up here on the page, right? So the red, the red numbers were the, were the ones we had hang fires or misfires with. Did you guys catch that while we were out there? Was that obvious? I was hoping it was obvious. I expected a little bit better performance than this. Now, you know, a lot of these failures, these weren't like the hang fires we've seen in previous videos. These were very slight hang fires. So while they're a big improvement over most of what we've seen earlier, you know, a hang fire is a hang fire. It's still bad. It's still very bad. So this is more proof that the S&B primer really sucks for 6.5 Creedmoor. And I've been trying to decide what else we can determine from this. The ball powders had a rough day. H380, Winchester 760, and Hodgson Superformance were the three ball powders we shot. Of course, H380 was awful. We couldn't even get the rounds to go off. Winchester 760 had some of our more distinct hang fires. It, it was pretty bad. Now, Superformance wasn't quite as bad, but that was a much slower powder that was a much more full case. I really did not expect it to fail, but it dang sure did. So all three of our ball powders had trouble today. Now our first two powders, Reloader 15 and Varget, I think we might just be in a situation where those powders are too fast to get sufficient case fill to use in 6.5 Creedmoor with small rifle primers. Now the problems were slight. If we put a Remington 7.5 primer in these, they'd be fine. But I think at least, you know, with these two, it really came down to case capacity still, even still here with our max charges. Because we've got Reloader 15, which is a double base powder, and Varget is a single base powder. So I don't know that that made much difference. And actually Reloader 15, if you remember, it, it just barely failed. Those were the slightest hang fires we had. And there was only one of them. So Reloader 15 almost passed the test, but not quite. And then up to N550, I, I think, you know, it's the same deal, just not, still not enough case fill. We were only up to 40 grains of powder. Now, going to 40, I was already exceeding Vitivori's maximum by a couple tenths of a grain. I think with that powder, we just need to go much higher. You know, if we got it up in the 41, 42, 43 grain area, maybe, you know, everything would be fine. But within that minimum and maximum charge over on the Vitivori website, it just ain't happening. Now, Remington 7.5 primer, we'd be just fine. All of this crap would go away if we were using Remington 7.5s. I feel certain of it. Although H380, I don't I still don't know what to think about that. That was that was a little bit crazy. Yeah, looking back, I don't think we've tried H380 with a good primer yet. So somewhere along the way, you know, on a normal bullet test, I'll pull out H380 and try it out with the Remington 7.5, but I'm not gonna drag this series out any farther. I think this is the yeah, this is gonna be our last video because I think we've learned what we needed to learn. So let's see if we can wrap it all up into some statements of truth. Primers make a massive difference. Large primers are better than small primers. If you're going to use small primers, the CCI 41 and the Remington 7.5 look like some pretty good options. Avoid the S&B primers at all costs. Temperature matters. We didn't really have the right tests, and I still don't even know how we would really test it to find out. So was temperature affecting the primers, or was it affecting the powder, or was it affecting both? I don't know for sure, but temperature matters without a doubt. And But I'll say that primer selection is more important. The changes with temperature weren't drastic. All right, let's see, next statement. That, that wasn't much of a statement, right? Kind of got off on a little bit of a tangent there. Back to our, back to our statements of truth. A full case, of powder, very high load density, is important for good ignition. It makes a big difference. I don't know that we were able to determine whether it was just the air getting displaced out of the case. The fact that, you know, a fuller case has less air in it, which I'm sure would affect the way the primers burn, or if a full case just held the powder more tightly against the flash hole, leading to better ignition. But regardless, having a nice full case of powder seems very important. Let's see, any more statements of truthiness we can come up with? I don't, could, this one's a little bit of a stretch, but ball powders are indeed harder to light. Can we say that? 
I feel a little bit shaky about saying that. Today's results definitely pointed that way. All three of these guys performed poorly today. So it leads me to believe the chemistry common to ball powders definitely could have had an effect. And I'm, of course, I'm more likely to, st to say that because that's kind of reloading common knowledge, right? You, uh, you hear that said a lot. The problem is you hear a lot of bullcrap said a lot. So that's why you'll see me a lot of times testing things that a lot of people think are obvious. I'd like to just prove it for myself, you know? But today's results definitely pointed in that direction. Now, one thing I would say that we definitely can't say is that double base extruded powders are harder to light. We can't say that at all. We have no proof of that in this video series. It might be the case, I don't know. But Reloader 15 did better than Varget today at similar load de densities. Anything else? Yeah, I think that's about it for bold statements. One thing I will say is this series has led me to the point where my hunting ammunition is probably gonna be large primer. I think if we take our best powders, nice full case, and we take one of our best primers, I think the ammo would absolutely be reliable down to crazy low temperatures, but I would still feel a little bit more comfortable using large primers in those situations. I'll tell you one big open question that we can't test right now is about that flash hole. We, we spoke earlier on in the series about the Starline brass having the large flash hole and the Lapua brass having the much smaller flash hole. So before too long, I'm gonna be buying some new brass and we might go with Lapua next just to test that theory because we've got a super crappy primer. We've got you know tests that we can repeat later with the Lapua brass to see if there's a, a, a significant performance difference between the Starline and the Lapua. That would be That would be interesting to test down the road. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. Now we're back to bullet testing. What I really need to do, I need to, I need to leave 6.5 Creedmoor for a couple days and do like some 223 videos, maybe a 6.5 Grendel video or two, but I don't want to, man. I want to do some testing with this stupid Hornady bullet. It's got me super excited. The groups in the last couple videos have just been awesome. So I think the very next video, we're just gonna stick with 6.5 Creedmoor for one more video. And we're gonna focus on this bullet because I want to shoot some little groups, man. And I think this bullet's going to get the job done for us. We've got, we've got a bunch of bullets still left to test in the Creedmoor. I've got multiple hunting bullets that we still haven't even tested from that first batch that we were supposed to test. Well, that's kind of what I want to do is work up several loads with some hunting bullets. We've got, we've, we've done some work with the 143 grain ELDX. So I want to get loads with a, a few other bullets and then do another gel test video. We did a ballistic gel test video with the 135 grain Burger Classic Hunter. And I gotta be honest, it was a little bit disappointing. So I wanna do some more gel test videos. So yeah, I'm, I'm rambling, which means it's time to wrap this guy up. So if you'd like to help support my channel, please come to patreon.com slash reloading. We're coming up on 300 uh, supporters over there and it means a ton, helps out a lot. So I'll see you guys next time.